Three words that every gamer hates to hear. Pay to win. Part of the whole reason we love video games is the first place is the fact that everyone is on the same page at all times and the winner is almost always whoever played better. Video games don't care about your age, your background, or anything else, only your skill. However, gamers get angry when that element of gaming is destroyed and the winner is now decided by whoever dropped more money. And in some games, they do this a lot worse than others. What's up, guys? Jimmy here. Welcome to Chaos Top 10s. And today, we're gonna, we've got a doozy. We're going to take a look at and go over the 10 worst pay-to-win games that are out there ever made. We are running a $200 Amazon gift card giveaway the entire month. All you have to do to enter is like this video, be subscribed, turn on your notifications, and leave a comment why you want to win it with your Twitter handle attached. I will announce the winner at the end of the month on Twitter. Kicking off our list at number 10 is Game of War. You guys know about this game, right? How could you not? This is the game that famously just throws Kate Upton's boobs at us and calls it an advertisement. This free-to-play mobile game was released in 2013 by a company called Machine Zone and has since become one of the highest grossing apps ever made. Game of War is free to download, but you have to pay out the butt to do pretty much anything else. Macworld stated in their review of the game that Game of War is the most aggressively monetized free-to-play game ever made. And Forbes similarly wrote the Game of War is the most over-the-top cash grab they've ever seen. According to Slice Intelligence, the, the average Game of War player spends $550 on in-game purchases throughout their time with the game, as opposed to players of other free-to-play games only spending about $87 on average. Now, I think that sums up this game pretty well, and when the average Game of War player is spending over five times more than other players on their own games, you know something's up. This one definitely could have been higher, okay, but just hear me out. At number nine, Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017. One of the most recent games on the list, the sequel to Battlefront, it, well, the reboot, takes our number nine spot. And this online multiplayer shooter is set in the Star Wars universe, boasting gorgeous visuals, awesome sound immersion, and solid gunplay. But all that has been forgotten. That's it. There, nobody's looking at those things. Fans were furious at EA when they revealed that Battlefront 2 would not have a traditional progression system like most multiplayers do, and they'd rather lock almost all the upgrades and unlockables behind a paywall or an RNG loot box system, making the entire game pay to win. You could grind your butt off for 20 hours and still have some of the worst stats than someone who just bought the game in an hour, and because they dropped a little extra money and got lucky with their drops, they have the distinct advantage. The insane loot box system completely broke the balance of the multiplayer and the backlash was so heavy that EA actually had to turn off the microtransaction switch altogether, although the game's still a massive grind and it'll probably be back sooner than later. At number eight, we have Battlefield Heroes. Developed by Easy Studios and published by the oh-so-wonderful EA, Battlefield Heroes is a free-to-play multiplayer game that was released in June of 2009 and shut down just six years later, along with all of EA's other free-to-play games at the time. The game attempted to compete with Team Fortress 2, another cartoonish free-to-play multiplayer shooter, although it failed miserably, as not only was the game average, but the microtransactions were so intrusive and escapable that it pushed many players away from the game. There are two weapon tiers in the game, normal, which are the ones you get right off the bat, and super uber weapons, which have to either be bought or rented to use, and they have much better stats. That's right, you can rent weapons in this game. I don't know about you guys, but the whole concept of renting an extremely powerful weapon just seems wrong to me in every aspect, and I, I, I can't be the only one that thinks that. You guys let me know in the comment section. Another wildly popular mobile game right now still is Clash of Clans at number 7. It first launched in August of 2012 and has seen great success thanks to its huge player base and its pretty invasive microtransactions. Clash of Clans is a game all about the leader of your village, building it up to be safe and then fighting off the other clans who are trying to take it over. While you can just work to upgrade and defend your areas, it is far faster to just pay your way to victory, especially with the game's tendencies to time you out unless you fork over some cash. Sometimes making your building construction actually lasts for days at a time. Some players tried to figure out just how much it would cost to max everything out and fully upgrade your base, and according to them, buying everything in the game would cost you between 15000 and 20000 real dollars. Moving on to number six is EA Sports UFC 3. Yeah, there's a lot of EA games in here. You would think that after the insane backlash of Battlefront 2, EA would have taken note of what fans don't like about multiplayer games, but 
You would be wrong, my friends. To be fair, this game isn't out yet, and it won't be released until February 2nd, but it still earns a spot due to how much of it was revealed in the recent beta and the fact that its multiplayer progression system is identical to Battlefront 2, which is even more insulting because this is a fighting game. Instead of working to upgrade your stats or remove upgrades altogether, since it's a freaking fighting game and the whole point of fighting games is for everyone to statistically be on the same page, right? UFC 3 features RNG loot boxes that can upgrade your character's strengths and delete their weaknesses. To use Jim Sterling's analogy, this is like if you were playing Street Fighter and you and your opponent are playing as Chung Lee, but their moves did more damage than yours. Despite you two being the same character, it doesn't matter. And this system came after the Battlefront 2 controversy, so... Okay, EA. At number five, we have Warface, and this one kind of sucks because Warface used to be a super fun game. Pretty well-balanced game, and it just... it... I don't know. Unfortunately. After a shift in publishers, the game was introduced tons of new pay-to-win mechanics that has really fragmented the player base. Warface first launched in 2013, but shifted publishers after a while, and that's when things started getting ugly. New guns were introduced that were so far and away better than the other ones, and the only way to get them was to pay real money or grind for an absurd amount of time. If you go through Steam reviews and forums for this page, it is full of players upset with how the pay to win game has worked and how it has become over the years since it shifted in ownership. And that shows you, it was a decent game. People care about it or they wouldn't be upset. At number four, we have Alids Online. And this MMORPG launched in 2011. It was developed by Alids team and published by Mail.ru Group. The game was developed on a relatively small budget of $12 million, which is still a lot of money, but it's small when compared to some other games on the market, and has since made up for that money. Trust me, with, they have, with the abundant microtransactions in the game, while it's free to play and there are no subscription fees, the MTs are pretty insane, and at one point even required you to fork over $100 just to get the basic items needed to play the game. That's right, it's a free-to-play game, but you need to spend money to be able to play the game. I don't know how free-to-play your game is when you have to drop cash just to have the basics of the game, the, the game mechanics to function, something doesn't jive there. Something doesn't add up to me. That's just, I don't know. I'm confused. At number three, we have Star Trek Trexels. If you're a fan of the Angry Joe show, you probably already know about this game as he campaigned pretty hard against it when it was for first released back in 2013. The idea was pretty cool and it was, you were going to be a ship commander and it was like FTL faster than light, but with a Star Trek theme and an old school retro art style. That's cool. However, that's where all the positives end with this game, as it has some of the shortest paywall timers that I've personally ever seen, making the game almost impossible to play without real money. I mean, sure, you can just grind the game, but that takes so long, it's not even worth doing it, and it was so obviously designed with the player paying you money, them money, in mind. What makes it even worse is the fact that after the first level of the game, which doesn't have any paywalls, okay, it gives you a pop-up and asks you if you would give it a five-star rating. Then they turn on the paywall switch after you wait it, which is just grimy and wrong to me. And they did it on purpose. Don't think that they did it. Oh, it was just coincidence. No, it's not at all. At number two, we have DC Legends, another mobile game that Angry Joe took a hard stance against recently. DC Legends, released in 2016, is a free-to-play team-based action game starring all your favorite DC characters. However, if you actually want these favorite characters, you're going to have to drop between $25 and $40 for each. That's right, this is a game based around assembling a squad of heroes to fight together. But every hero is going to cost you $25 or more. I don't really think I need to say any more about it than that, honestly. And at number one on today's best pay to win games, Dungeon Keeper 2014. Perhaps the most infuriating example of a greedy reboot ever, the 2014 Dungeon Keeper is a reboot of the classic strategy game series that pissed off millions of people upon its release. Aside from the fact that the entire aesthetic and style of the game was changed from the originals, making it seem like it wasn't even a Dungeon Keeper game, the 2014 reboot was so aggressively pay to win and monetized that it was virtually unplayable for those that didn't want to spend an absurd amount of money. Much like Star Trek Trexels, Dungeon Keeper hits you with a paywall, and then another paywall, and by the time, well you have a time between paywalls, but it's really short, and it's just, it's, it's daunting. EA came under massive fire after the criticism of this game as they tried to dismiss the entire issue in the most insulting way I've ever heard a publisher react to criticisms, and here we go. In early 2014, EA was not only caught censoring user ratings that were lower than five stars, but they also tried to tell people criticizing the microtransactions that they weren't playing the game correctly and that people were upset with them for innovating too much. 
That's not an exaggeration or a misquote. Frank Gabu, the head of EA's mobile department, was literally quoted saying that the outrage towards Dungeon Keeper was due to them innovating too much. Way to go, EA. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 of the worst pay-to-win games out there. You guys let me know if any others added or added to your salty list that you can't stand as well. And drop a like on the video if you guys enjoy these gaming top 10s. A brand new one goes up every single night. Turn on your notifications. And if you want to submit ideas for future top 10s, there is a link in the description to do that. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you on the next video.